For this experiment, you will find in your basket an evaporating dish, which is this bowl, and you will find a film canister with a number and your mixture in it. You will also want to make sure that you come to lab with your lab notebook prepared. Remember that each professor has different ways of collecting your report, so check with your professor on how you will be turning in your reports this semester. You're first going to start by weighing the clean, dry, evaporating dish. You want to make sure that it is clean as these are used every year. Sometimes there's residue of sand in there. So use your finger to clean it out and then weigh your evaporating dish. Be sure that the balance is zeroed. Sometimes the balances will drift, so you'll have to hit the zero button or sometimes it will say tear once it settles on zero you can place your evaporating dish on here. Remember that you will only want to put a room temperature evaporating dish or other glassware on here as heat will break the balances. If you can't hold it with your hands, it's too hot to put on the balance. Transfer the entire material from your film canister into the evaporating dish. You want to get all of it out, so you may want to tap it on the counter and shake it a couple of times to be sure you have all of it transferred. Reweigh your sample and make sure that the number is steady and record this number in your lab notebook or your data table. At this point, you're going to move your experiment to the hood. This is because we are going to be producing ammonium chloride fumes. If you've never used a Bunsen burner before, Take a moment before lab to look at the video on how to use a Bunsen burner. Begin heating with a blue flame that does not have two cones. This is going to be a medium flame. Once our sample has started to sublime and we've uh, stirred it and gotten most of the ammonium chloride from the bottom parts, then we will turn the heat up to make sure that we can completely get rid of the ammonium chloride. Remember that as part of your participation grade, you may be asked to take a picture of the sublimation that is going on. You may notice that the sand and salt mixture starts to turn yellow. And if you hold the glass stirring rod, because you've been uh, stirring this to keep it from popping, if you hold this over the steam that appears to be coming off of it, and there's plenty of steam, you may begin to see a whitish condensation on there. And that is the ammonium chloride that is deposited. So we want all of this to be um, sublimed out of here, but be careful that if there is any sand or salt on your uh, stirring rod, you want to make sure that makes it back into the bowl so that it can be weighed with that portion of the mixture. When you can't see any more fumes coming out of the evaporating dish, you're going to want to turn up the heat. To do so, you're going to add more oxygen by taking the barrel and rotating it to the left. As you do this, you should start to see two cones, a larger flame and a smaller, brighter inner flame. Think about how you could be sure there was no more ammonium chloride in your dish. For the next part, you're going to need to do some planning ahead. We're going to need to weigh our beaker ahead of time. And because the salt has a tendency to splatter as we're drying it off, we're also going to weigh your larger watch glass at the same time. Then we're going to heat both the salt water in the beaker and the wet sand until they are dry. The sand also has a tendency to spatter when you heat it. So you may want to heat your small watch glass in order to uh, be able to use that ahead of time. If your stirring rod still has residue from the sublimation process on it, make sure you clean and dry it before you move on to the next steps. Add 25 to 30 milliliters of deionized water into evaporating dish. Then you're going to need to stir it. You really want to make sure you are mixing the sand as well as the water itself so that any of the salt that might be at the bottom buried with the sand ends up being dissolved in the water. So this is why you're going to do this for five minutes. You're going to decant your liquid off by pouring slowly while leaving the sand behind. 
Sometimes it is helpful to lay the glass stirring rod over the lip of the evaporating dish to guide the water. This can also serve to help block any remaining sand from getting out. Now chances are at this point you still have a little bit of salt left in here. In order to have a quantitative transfer we're going to need to rinse the sand two more times with about 20 milliliters of deionized water again and combine those portions of water with the other water in our beaker. Now you're going to heat both your salt water and your sample of sand until you dry off the water. You may end up drying your, uh, may end up drying off the salt water on a hot plate so that you can do this at the same time as you work with the sand. This time you will be using the Bunsen burner at your desk. There's a clay triangle there and you will be heating your sample. Heat it slowly at first because if it is too hot, the water will evaporate underneath the sand and cause the sand to splatter out. This will both uh, affect your results and become dangerous as there is hot flying sand in the room. If your sand begins to sputter while you are heating it, put the small watch glass on top and remove the flame. Once the sputtering has stopped, make sure that your flame is on a cool setting so there are no double cones and the flame is just a little bit floppy. Once the sand looks dry, remove the small watch glass from the top and continue to stir and heat for another couple of minutes. This will ensure that any moisture that is in the sand is removed before you weigh. As you heat your salt water in the beaker, make sure that the watch glass is placed on top with the curved side down. This will allow any condensation to go to the center of what is over your beaker and to drop into the fluid so that none of it is lost to the outside. When your salt water solution has dried, you may notice there is still some condensation on the watch glass. What you can do is pick up the watch glass with your tongs and very carefully turn it on its side. Rest it in the lip, and this way it will hold still. The water that is there will either drip down or evaporate off. And this way you won't lose any salt, but you can help to dry off any water that remains. Do this until the watch glass and the beaker are completely dry. Weigh the dry watch glass and beaker together on the balance. Because all of our separation processes are physical changes, we haven't changed the composition of the sand. So we can reuse this. Take the sand dry from your evaporation dish and return it to the labeled container um, that your instructor shows you. There will probably be some residue in there. Clean this out as well so that the next lab has a clean, dry evaporating dish to use. Place your evaporating dish back in your basket along with the film canister.